This is Phil Koopman with a tutorial on avoiding spaghetti code. You get spaghetti code when you have code that has a complex or tangled control structure. Historically, this came about through undisciplined use of go-to statements and other unstructured coding practices. With modern structured programming languages, crazy go-to structures are less common, but you can still get spaghetti code easily enough if you aren't careful. Typical anti-pattern signs that you have spaghetti code include the following. Deeply nested conditional statements, for example, if-else structures nested four or five or more levels deep. Modules that have switch statements nested inside or outside of all but the very simplest if statements. Or any code in general that has high cyclomatic complexity, which involves code that has too many paths to perform effective unit testing. We'll talk more about cyclomatic complexity on the next slide. This topic is important because complex code tends to be buggy code. At a first level, it is well known that unstructured code tends to be buggy code. This is because unstructured code is generally hard to understand, difficult to test, and very difficult to peer review effectively. But even structured code can be just as hard to understand, test, and review if it is too complex. The general idea of avoiding spaghetti code is to limit the complexity within each unit of code, such as a subroutine or method. At some point, the complexity has to show up somewhere in the software, but the idea is to create moderately simple modules that you can understand in isolation, test in isolation, and then, when you're confident of the quality of each module, put them together to create a system. You may have seen at some point a subroutine that is a thousand lines long or more with hundreds of if statements. That's usually spaghetti code. The question is, how complex is too complex, and how do you know when your code changes from good code to spaghetti code? The motivation for limiting complexity is twofold. First, complex code is difficult to review. If your code is too complex, you'll miss defects when performing peer reviews. The human mind of a peer reviewer can handle only so much complexity before it compromises your ability to find bugs. The second motivation to reduce complexity is that complex code can be difficult or impossible to test. If you have extremely complex code, there may be no practical way to reach each line of code with a set of unit tests, leaving untested code. If we want a consistent way of reducing complexity, it's really helpful to have a way to measure it. McCabe Cyclomatic Complexity, abbreviated MCC, is a well-known way to measure the complexity of software and determine whether that software is spaghetti code. You can measure MCC first by considering a single module, whether that be a subroutine, a method, or some other chunk of code that you can unit test. While in practice MCC can be computed by a tool, it's helpful to see how it can be done by hand as an illustration of the principle. First, reorganize your code so that different basic blocks of code are apparent. A basic block is a segment of code with a single entry point and a single exit point. The idea is that once you figure out what a basic block is, when you execute it, you're going to execute all those lines of code together every time. Next, draw a control flow diagram through all the paths in the module, here represented by green arrows. Each arrow shows the path through a single basic block. An if statement has two parallel arrows, one for the fall through path and one for the if path. An if else statement similarly has two arrows, but that covers the two different code paths, the if path and the else path. More complicated, chained, if else statements have more parallel paths. Ultimately, all the arrows converge at the final return statement. Once you have drawn the flow control graph, you can compute MCC by counting the number of holes or eyes in the graph. Here we see the MCC is counted by looking at holes number one, two, three, and four, and then adding one more for the area outside the graph giving an MCC total of five for this example. That final plus one is so that a module with no branches at all still has an MCC of one. What the MCC means in practice is that you might have to run up to five different unit tests to cover all the paths in the module. 
Sometimes you might need fewer tests depending on the actual code and branch paths, but in general, MCC correlates with the effort you'll need to spend on creating unit tests to get full unit test coverage that hits all the basic blocks in the code. A related metric is called strict cyclomatic complexity, or SCC. This differs from MCC in that it looks inside the conditions for an if statement. If there are multiple conditional elements that might need to be tested separately, a higher score is assigned. For example, an if statement with a condition of either x equals 0 or y equals 0 would need to be tested for both possible conditions, resulting in an SCC score of plus 2 for that compound condition. A type of testing coverage called Modified Condition Decision Coverage, or MCDC, requires this level of testing, so if you're using MCDC coverage, then SCC is a better metric for you. Regardless of whether you use MCC or SCC, a high complexity metric means that you have tangled code. In practice, this complexity can arise from multiple sources. Of course, using go-tos can easily result in both high complexity and impenetrable control flow in general. However, also contributing to complexity can be nested conditionals, overly complex operations in a single line of code, multiple return statements, and nested exceptions, even if these do not necessarily affect the complexity metric itself. You don't want a code that looks like this plate of spaghetti. Not only is it a tangled mess, but when you pull on an end of it that's sticking out, you have no idea which other end is going to start moving and which other pieces it's going to slide past on its way. In other words, you just can't understand the details because it's such a mess. Setting aside other sources of complexity, applying MCC itself generally involves setting a maximum target value. A typical target value is an MCC of 10 or 15 for any single software module. So you look at all your modules and look at the highest MCCs, and those are the ones that have complexity problems. 10 to 15 is somewhat of a soft target, but by the time you're at 30, usually that's pretty suspect. And in general, above 30, you should be thinking about how to break that software unit into multiple units to make review and testing easier and more effective. Above 50, software is generally untestable in practice because there are just too many unit tests to run and you're going to have trouble arranging the test cases to actually hit all the deeply nested or various blocks of code. There can be exceptions to this rule in which code is easy to test and easy to understand, but they are few and special. The most notable exception is that if you have an absolutely flat switch statement that is handling a set of parallel cases and the switch value is an input parameter, then probably it's okay because testing is pretty straightforward. This structure is typically seen on a message decoder or event dispatcher type of structure, but that's only a small fraction of your code. Even then, once you start putting nested if statements inside the big switch statement, you can easily get spaghetti. If you get a complexity metric above 75, then not only are you generally untestable, but it's likely that each time you change something, you'll break something else. In other words, a complexity metric above 75 predicts you'll have a bug farm in which fixing bugs just results in even more bugs. Generally, with a complexity metric above 75, really all you can do is throw the code away and redesign. It's important to note that these numbers are approximate and depending on your situation, you might want to have somewhat different target numbers. However, the numeric guidelines I've given should be pretty close to what you should be doing. While McCabe Cyclomatic Complexity, or MCC, is a generally accepted and useful complexity metric, it has a vulnerability in that it can be gamed by using complex conditionals to replace nested if statements. For example, this triply nested if based on x, y, and z, would normally add 3 to the MCC metric. However, it can be restated as a complex single conditional using ands and have an MCC addition of only plus 1, but it actually has exactly the same complexity and requires the same number of test cases to get complete coverage. The solution to this vulnerability is to use strict cyclomatic complexity, or SCC, sometimes known as CC2.
With SCC, every extra conditional Boolean term adds one to the SCC. That way, with this metric, a triply nested if and the double ampersand form both add three to the complexity metric, closing this loophole in gaming MCC. There are some important notes for applying either MCC or SCC. The biggest one is this is a per subroutine metric. So if you have one large piece of spaghetti code, breaking it up into small, easily testable subroutines improves the SCC of each one without necessarily changing the complexity of the overall module. But that's okay, because the point of this metric is to encourage you to break up large chunks of complex code into smaller pieces that are easier to understand and easier to test. Putting together ideas from global variables and cyclomatic complexity, we can create the spaghetti factor metric SF. The spaghetti factor SF is equal to the strict cyclomatic complexity SCC plus five times the number of global variables plus the number of lines of source code slock divided by 20 where the number of lines of source code are the number of C statements, so that excludes comments and counts multi-line statements as a single statement. The scoring on this metric is that you want a sweet spot of about 5 to 10. If every single procedure in your code has no if statements or one if statement, and your SF is down at 1 or 2, you'll have a lot of tiny little subroutines that are hard to keep track of. So having plenty of procedures in the range of 5 to 10 is fine. Lower isn't necessarily better. Rather, you want quite a bit of the code in the sweet spot. But once the number gets too high, say around 15, you really don't want to be doing that except where you really need to. Around 20, it's time to do a design review and look at refactoring the code. Around 30, you probably want to refactor the design and try and break things up. Now, there are exceptions to this. For example, if you have a flat switch statement, and that switch statement is handling different byte values as, for example, in a network message dispatcher, you know, that's okay as a one-off exception. But in general, you should not be seeing a lot of that. Around a spaghetti factor score of 50, probably your software is untestable unless it's a special case, and you should be throwing the module away and redesigning. At 75, not only is it untestable, but probably every time you touch it, you break it and it's unmaintainable. And around 100, Generally, when you see code like that, it's basically a nightmare. You should just be throwing the whole thing away and starting over with that section of your system. Again, these numbers are pretty rough rules of thumb, and a number one or two higher or lower is not that big a deal. It's subject to debate. However, when you see really high numbers on this spaghetti factor metric, you should be really asking yourself why your software is that complex and if there's any possible way to make it simple enough so you have a better chance to test it and to understand it. Best practice for code complexity is to keep the code relatively simple. The highest MCC, or even better, SCC, in your system should be below 10 to 15, with the exception of event dispatcher style or state machine handling flat switch statements. These numbers enable thorough unit testing of all your code. It should be noted that this is a metric where extremely low MCC might not be better than a moderate but below 10 to 15 MCC. Breaking code down so that all the MCCs are two or three can easily lead to code that is too fragmented to make sense. So balance and moderation are important. A way to visualize this issue is to consider the Chinese puzzle ball shown in the picture. Reaching the center of that puzzle ball requires lining up all the nested carved concentric balls so that you can actually reach the center of the balls, or in code, the line of code you want to test. Doing so can be tricky and take a lot of time and patience. And unlike this puzzle ball, in spaghetti code, the holes are not regularly spaced and lining them up can be very challenging. Beyond just MCC measurements, there are some additional signs that your code might have too much complexity. If statements should not be nested more than two or three deep. In particular, if you see patterns of deeply nested if statements that have similar logical structures and similar conditions, you might be in a situation where converting the design from a flowchart based design to a state chart based design will drastically simplify things by allowing you to trade in those nested ifs for a flat, easy-to-test switch statement.
commingled nesting of if and switch statements is often a complexity warning sign. Breaking up this sort of code can often be done by moving the code for any complex switch statement clause into a separate procedure. That way, you can test the switch statement mechanics for calling particular cases independently from the actions taken by each case. Finally, excessive numbers of breaks and continue statements can make the flow difficult to follow. Multiple return statements are a bit controversial, but they should be used with significant care to avoid creating spaghetti code. If your module's too complex, it's time to break it up into smaller pieces. While re-engineering an existing code base might seem daunting, there are ways to do this a piece at a time that makes sense. A possible management technique is to list the top five or 10 highest MCC offenders in a weekly status report and ask two questions. The first question is, why can't they be simplified? And the second question is, do you have 100% unit test code coverage on that high complexity module? If you can't get test coverage, then you should consider simplifying the module. If the logic flow isn't completely obvious, then you probably won't understand where all the bugs are in peer review. Usually what you should do in a high complexity situation is to break the function up into a single parent function and multiple smaller helper functions so that you can test each helper function in isolation and independently. Then when you're testing the parent module, it's okay to assume that the helpers are behaving properly since they've already been tested by themselves. The point of all this is to enable thorough peer reviews based on understanding each individual module and also get high unit test coverage. The biggest pitfall to complexity is that complexity tends to grow over time. Your code might start out simple, but before you know it, it's MCC's up around 25 and it's time to do something about it. A good way to deal with this situation is to periodically run an MCC computing complexity tool over your code base, identify the most complex modules, and spend time refactoring those complex high-risk modules.